You know, Montreal Canadiens were known for making uh, lopsided or one-sided or interesting trades in the 1980s. Denis Savard was picked up from uh, Chicago for Chris Chelios. Montreal eventually won the Cup in 93, but when Montreal traded for this guy, there was no doubt he was one of the better players in the league, a former number one draft pick. But a lot of people felt they gave up too much to get him. They could have basically signed him as a free agent or even given one of the established, established defensemen from Montreal even up for a form. But uh, the, the player we're going to be talking about today, two-time Stanley Cup finals, probably one of the better defensive defensemen in the history of the NHL. Don't know if he's going to make it to the Hall of Fame, but... You know, he, he perfected the defensive defenseman, very rarely would make a mistake. So today we're going to be talking with the very durable and very underrated for a lot of people, Rick Green. Now Richard Douglas Green, born February 20th, 1956, in a beautiful community of Belleville, Ontario. First came to major prominence uh, in 68 and 69 at the Quebec International Pee Wee Hockey Tournaments with the minor hockey squads from Toronto. Now, he spent the majority of his junior career with the London Knights of the OHA, where he earned the Max Cominci Trophy for Most Outstanding Defenseman, as selected by the league general managers in 1976. Now, in 76, he was also made an uh, all-star team with London, uh, and he was London's captain in 76. Now, he entered the uh, two, 76 draft uh, as the no OMJHL's number two prospect for uh, the entry. Now, he was also named OMJHL's best defensive defenseman by a panel of coaches in 76 and also attended the Saunders Secondary School in London, Ontario. So he was drafted by Washington who were dire need of defense and played his first game against the Atlanta Flames on October 5th, 1976, wearing his very prominent number five. Now, the, the idea about Rick, uh, his first few seasons in the league were extremely positive. Uh, he only played 45 games in 77, but by the 1980 season, he was amongst uh, uh, the top defensemen in the league and putting up some goals as well. From 1977 to uh, 1982, when Montreal picked him up, he, he put up some consistent numbers, played between 65 and 71 games, uh, certain seasons, 8 goals, 6 goals, 5 goals. Like I said, uh, a points producer, good on the plus minus. And again, uh, uh, very uh, very positive on the defense. Now, 82-83, uh, eventually the trade occurred where Montreal was leading a little bit of strength. Now, on September 9th, 82, before the start of the campaign, Montreal traded Ron Langway, Doug Jarvis, Brian Englund, Two of the bigger, two of the top five defensemen, and Craig Lachlan, a good defensive def defensive forward, to uh, Montreal, to Washington, for Rick Green, of course, the highly regarded Ryan Walter. Now, as soon as Green uh, arrived in Montreal, there were some problems. He was injury plagued in '84, only played seven games. But uh, when he came back in the playoffs, ladies and gentlemen, he was one of the main reasons he got to the semifinal round within two games of beating the Islanders to play the Oilers in the final. Now, 1986, again, injured for most of the season, but it was a monster in the playoffs. Five points in 18 games, going one goal. In 89, uh, Montreal's Stanley Cup run, his defensive uh, ability uh, played out big time, played 21 games in the playoffs that year with two points. Now, uh, 89, he left the Habs, started to play for H.G. Murano in the Serie A uh, League in Europe, played with the Red Wings in 91 for 65 games, and then 92, wrapped up his career with uh, the Islanders. Now, uh, he won numerous awards uh, uh, in the NHL. He was uh, the Washington Johnson Award top defenseman in Washington in 80, 81, and 82. He was the Washington Unsung Hero Award, fan vote, 1980. And he was also the Montreal Fort Star Unsung Hero in 1987. Now, during his coaching career, he was named New York Islanders assistant coach prior to the 93 season and remained in that position until May 95. He was named the LA assistant coach in 95 and remained there until 1999. He was also a Montreal AC from November 2000 until the end of the 2003 season. Now, uh, injury played like crazy. Give an example. He missed part of the 77 season with a broken right wrist. 
Uh, missed part of the 78 season with a separated shoulder. Missed part of 81 with a broken hand. Injuries suffered in November 1980. Missed parts of the 81 season with wrist and groin injuries. Missed part of the 82 season with a separated shoulder uh, in a game actually against Montreal. Missed part of the 83 season with a hip injury. Missed most of 84 with a broken right wrist, which uh, occurred during uh, 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 a broken right wrist and a broken rib in two separate incidents in Montreal in that campaign. Missed part of the 86 season with a broken thumb, and of course re-injured a thumb February 24, 86. Came back too soon. Now I miss part of the 87 season where, of all things, a lacerated eyelid injury suffered in October 86. Now he retired for the first time in 1989, but later opted to continue his career in Europe near the end of the 1889-90 campaign. He was initially traded by Detroit to the Islanders in exchange for Alan Kerr and future considerations on May 28-91, but uh, did not agree to contract terms with the Islanders until January 92. Again, another injury, missed part of the 92 season with a broken right instep, an injury he suffered in practice on J J January 24th, and eventually retired to pursue a coaching uh, career. Now, he was also a skater in the NHL USSR Rendezvous Series in 87, and he played for Team Canada at the Royals numerous times, three four place finishes and a bronze in 82. He was also a WHA draft pick in 76 by Quebec, 10th overall. And he also played on a Washington team that was in Sweden's 81 DN Cup tournament. Now, again, in Italy in 1990, he was also a skater with the Heroes of Hockey team during the 93 NHL All-Star Weekend. Now, one thing about Mr. Green, he can probably basically said, no matter any mistake that was made by the Montreal Canadiens on defense, he would rarely make it. He was never out of position, similar to like a Jacques Lapierre year or a good defensive defenseman that uh, Montreal would have in the 1950s. Rarely lose his cool. I never saw one incident where uh, he would get into a fight or uh, get verbally aggressive with somebody. A true gentleman on the ice. But what's kind of weird, uh, for Washington to draft him first overall, it's uh, sort of a, I don't know what you would call it. Uh, we look at round one of the 76 draft. There wasn't much for Washington behind then. then. Really, there were only Bertie Federico and Don Murdoch. Rick Green was the best defenseman available. There wasn't uh, uh, another key defenseman taken until uh, Mark Suzor was taken to 17 overall because Bjorn Johansson didn't have much of an uh, NHL career and Dave Shand was more of a, a forward defenseman. So, But I mean, that year, Glenn Sharpley was available, uh, Don Murdoch as well. So whatever they were looking for, uh, he found in Rick Green. And the trade for Langway and Englund, um, you know, showed that Washington could build via draft and via trades and started that renaissance of the Capitals that almost got them to uh, high contender status in the late 80s, especially in that famous series against the Islanders. So in the Stanley Cup uh, game one night, we thank you for listening. If you have any uh, thoughts about Rick Green, uh, if you think he should be in the Hall of Fame down the road, let us know. Uh, uh, defensive defenseman like that what really hurt his totals of course were the injuries so that's something that's not not being helped because he easily could have could have played over a thousand games but uh, you know uh, players like him on defense only come along uh, once in a lifetime and those uh, the trade for him almost led to three cups so that sums it up right there thanks for listening bye